We're starting off with a few questions kind of about the, the structure of black holes. So um, yep. um, someone has asked, what is actually in a black hole and what would happen if they went inside one? Mm. I wish I knew. <laughs> I think that's uh, nobody really knows. Um, I think that's where we have this challenge of what the mathematics tell us, which is all the matter will end up at this point of sing singularity, which is this word, right? We can put a word on it, but it, I, I, you know, I completely agree with whoever asked this question. We can't visualize what that means, and I'm afraid I don't have a better picture to um, to to give our you know people listening. It's it's. I don't know. I, <laughs> it's just very difficult to imagine. Um, and the problem is that we'll never be able to know and to see directly because we can't peer within, we can't see within the event horizon. And if even if somebody gets into the event horizon, tell, even within the, uh, the event horizon, there's no sending back a signal or a picture or anything to tell us what it's like. So I don't know, I, you know, you never say never, right? It's possible that, you know, science evolves and we figure out more things and we're able to sort of figure out what it's like out there. But at the moment, we just don't know. Yeah. And it, I mean, it's always good to know that there's lots more questions to be answered in science. So for everybody watching that maybe wants to be an astrophysicist, there's still plenty of stuff for them to be researching when they're older. Absolutely. Um, so then LM has asked, how close is our closest black hole? That's a really good question. Um, I mean, they're pretty common. The 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 sort of the smallish size black hole. I don't on top of my head. I don't have a figure to give you, but you know they're in the vicinity. They're not close enough to be of any bother to us. So just so everybody rest assured, there's no black hole coming our way to kind of uh, mess with us. But um, as you saw, they're quite easy to form. You just see these very massive stars, which are a lot more rare than the small, the normal stars like the sun and so on, but they're not, you know, uh, crazy bright. You know, there's some very bright stars we see um, that will eventually evolve into black holes. Okay. And then um, Tulip has asked, you mentioned that often you'll find supermassive black holes at the center of galaxies. Is there a reason for that? Well, that's a very good question. And that's that really, the answer to that relates to the bit which uh, I mentioned about how do you grow these supermassive black holes. So we definitely that know that galaxies, and this is the kind of research I do a lot, you know, when you take two galaxies and get close, they will merge together to form a bigger galaxy. And when that happens, you know, the two black holes that you might have in the galaxies will naturally sort of sink towards the center of, of this new galaxy that you form. So just by the fact that galaxies grow by being small things and merging into bigger things naturally sort of brings black holes towards the center and builds the supermassive black holes there. Okay, so we've got a few people asking, could we send, could we theoretically spend, send space probes near to a black hole to at least get closer than the satellites we have on the planet? Would that help at all? Well, um, theoretically, but you need, I mean, the further we've just we've just been able to send something beyond that beyond the solar system right the voyager probes that were sent out in the 70s just crossed out of the solar system and that took how long has it been you know 50 years so uh the answer is well maybe but we'd need to be able to travel at speed of light or faster than the speed of light which you know is not not a thing on the radar whatsoever yeah, Unfortunately. So, so if we were to send them out at the speed we can send them out, it would be thousands, hundreds of years, thousands of years? It would probably be, so yes, at the very least, yes. Okay, so yeah, probably not going to happen anytime soon. Or um, we won't get signal back within our lifetimes, for sure. <laughs> um, Jay has asked, you mentioned a lot about dust. What's mm -hmm. What is actually the dust made of? Uh, that's a good question. I mentioned dust. Dust is my little uh, uh, research obsession at the moment. So then maybe that's why it came out of my mouth. Uh, I think about dust in space a lot. Um, so dust uh, in space is much, much very small particles, often just a few molecules stuck together. Uh, there's something that we, there's some, sometimes some long chains of carbon atoms that on Earth, they, they're produced by cars in sort of the exhaust uh, engine. Uh, in space, they're formed by stars as well. So it's not kind of the same dust as we have on Earth. It's more like a few molecules stuck together. 
okay so yeah kind of small bits and bobs um yeah so ryu has asked um so they i'll read out the whole question i've i've always accepted that light is affected by gravity but i question how so when photons don't have mass so i guess their question is how are photons pulled into a black hole when they don't have any mass yeah so so it's a really excellent question and the answer is that it's not uh, it's not gravity it's not like they're being pulled on because as you say they don't have mass so you can't really pull the thing is is that gravity changes the shape of space and light always travels in a straight line that might be something like you know, light you know you turn a flashlight light goes in a straight line but if there's something really massive, there's gravity, you know, a big black hole, for example, it changes the shape of space. So what is a straight line isn't actually a straight line. It will be a curve. So as you send the light, the light will, you know, will, oh, yeah, I'm going on straight line. But as an outside observer, it will look like it's curving and then it can be deflected like that. OK, brilliant. Um, somewhat related, um, Galactic Girl has asked, what is the force that makes a black hole eject things if it's gravity pulling everything into it? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, and it comes down a lot to something we call angular momentum, which might be something you've, you've people have heard about, right? The, the, the most classic example is the, the, the figure skater, right? When they spin, you know, if they have their arms out, they spin slow. And then as they bring their arms in, they go faster and faster. That's because angular momentum, which is sort of the speed at which you rotate, it, it needs to be conserved. So as stuff tries to fall into the black hole, it's spinning really fast. So to be able to fall into it, it needs to lose angular momentum. It needs to lose some of that energy. And one way that happens is that by, by, is by ejecting these kind of jets and all that, that stuff out there. Okay, brilliant. We've got time for a couple more questions. Um, Go for it. This one really, I thought was a fantastic question. Um, why are black holes collapsing even if the universe is expanding? Is it that their force is greater than the force of the expansion of the universe? That's exactly, that's exactly right. So you're very, that's a very good question. It's true, the universe is expanding, but on, on small scales, gravity can win over that entire expansion. For example, even our whole galaxy, the Milky Way galaxy, uh, it, within itself, it's not expanding. So the distance between us and the nearest star is staying the same because we, as a as a galaxy as a whole, we have enough gravity to you know hold on hold on to ourselves. So it, this is even more true for black holes because they have so much more gravity. Okay. Um, and then one final question, slightly different to the other question. Zane has asked, "What do you need to become an astrophysicist?" Ah, that's a really good question, and I hope it's because. People are keen to pursue this career. Um, at first, at school level, lots of maths. I think maths is the, the strong foundation of pretty much all of science. Math, I only started doing astrophysics when I started doing my PhD. So at university, I did maths with a bit of physics and then went into astrophysics. Um, it takes, otherwise, it takes just curiosity and then just being willing to, to, to think about these crazy things, really. And, and, you know, to kind of look out, reach out, you know, try to see what kind of careers people have and how they got there. Okay, brilliant. And as we've seen tonight, there's loads of, loads of stuff in astrophysics that still need to be found out. So there's plenty of Nobel prizes left for everybody watching tonight to, to win in their, in their future careers. Yeah, and lots of fun to be had just trying to find the answers to these amazing questions. Yeah, or at the very least, a nice trip to Chile. <laughs> exactly. <laughs>